the SunSync training manual part two. Now that you've got basic understanding of our manual, uh, our basic, basic, um, not our manual, I should say, but a basic understanding of solar, batteries, types of inverter, what's the difference between a hybrid inverter, an on-grid inverter, or a grid-tied inverter. So most of this should have been covered into the first manual. But basically, most inverters that are being used generally are grid-tied inverter with a solar panel that directly connects the inverter and it connects the grid. Um, traditionally, for off-gridding systems, are uh, just a simple off-grid where basically the inverter charges some batteries via a charge controller and the battery then discharges into the inverter and supplies power locally. Sometimes you have a changeover switch where you have got AC and you will then switch over your AC to your battery system. And many of the old standards actually relate to changeover switches because they don't accommodate, accommodate for the new hybrid inverter, which is both on-grid and off-grid. And as discussed previously, the SunSync inverter is actually a bi-directional inverter rather than a single inverter with a charger and a changeover. It is a true bi-directional inverter that is actually AC coupled, as well as having the UPS and various other outputs. So this is part of the training manual. We're going to actually discuss installing the SunSync inverter. The general instruction manual included with the system is quite good. And for the simple sake, it's probably easier to use the instruction manual as a guide. We have two types of inverter, two sizes which is the smaller cabinet and the larger cabinet. Uh, the smaller one is for the 3.5 and for the 5.5 uh, inverters. And the larger one is for the 8.5 and also for the three phase inverters. So there's three, two cabinet sizes. The wiring configuration is different for each cabinet. So please take note, the connections on the PCB are very different and we try to include this. Next topic, if you are installing an inverter, please, please, this should be done by a qualified electrical engineer uh, or a licensed electrical engineer. This stuff is dangerous. Just take care. Um, you know, if you're using three phase 440 volts, it will kill you. Even the other stuff, if you make a mistake, can kill you. Please, 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 must be done by somebody who really knows. If you're a novice, not too sure, seek advice. Um, I suggest don't do it yourself. Let the, let the professionals do the professional job. Um, don't try because you'll end up not only possibly killing yourself, hurting yourself, hurting others, but also damaging the equipment. Just make a slight wiring mistake, then you can vaporize the equipment and you've got no warranty. So if you're unsure and you're not qualified, don't do it. Um, seek some advice. Look at the video. Get an understanding of it by all means, um, or read the manual. Understand what our equipment is about, but please make sure it is installed by a professional person. So looking at a general overview of the inverters. So the, 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 this is covered on page five of the manual and it basically tells you what the various connections, the PV, the power on off switch, the battery connectors, the IO ports, and um, MPPT, maximum peak power transfer. We covered it in the first manual, what MPPT means, but MPPT is all about capturing the panels at that most efficient. Very simple scenario, which we did cover. If, you're, if you've got say, and you can do the math yourself, if you've got um, a 24 volt solar panel charging a 12 volt battery, you connect it and it is a 100 watt, so it's say four amp, just round off the figures. So you have four amps panel and it's gonna charge a 12 volt battery. Well, it might start off at 24 volts, but once you connect it to a 12 volt battery, it becomes a 12 volt panel. Current is constant, so the current stays the same, but the main difference is the voltage drops as therefore your 100 watt panel becomes a 50 watt panel. How to turn 100 into 50 watt? Simple. And that's using what they often use is PWM. So it's a very inefficient way. And in fact, PWM, pulse width modulation, is even less efficient. So just something to bear in mind. I only mentioned that before, but again, it was covered in the first manual, but always be aware. Our units have either one or two MPPTs. 
and also depending on the MPPT, some MPPTs you can parallel two strings. So on the larger inverters, each MPPT can take two strings in parallel, very important. Um, but we'll continue to move on to, on that. You On the actual unit, obviously, you've got your glands at the bottom. It's an IP rated unit. You've got your display, your function buttons, your RS-485 port, your CAN bus port. You've got a generator, which we often call, which we call an auxiliary port, but it's marked as a generator. You've got your on-grid, your load, which is now, I'll talk about the load and the grid connection separately because this is often where people misunderstand the product and I'll explain about that. So most of the features are actually covered on page five of the manual. I'm not gonna sit and read them all because otherwise it's a little bit boring of what they can use. Technical specifications is covered on page seven. Um, this is just a general guide and this covers the, everything from the 3.6 right up until the 8.8 and it covers a range of models. And on page nine, there's actually a very useful circuit diagram and um, we'll include that, shows you the, the flow and how the relays connect on the inverter. So that's quite useful. So that's just the basic overview of the inverter. Now we're gonna move on to installation, installing the system. Well, think about where you're going to fit the inverter or inverters. Try not to put them in direct sunlight. One problem is sunlight can actually damage the LCD. So if you get in direct sunlight, it will damage the LCD and it will shorten the life and it will not be covered under warranty because we don't suggest you put the inverter in direct sunlight. It is IP rated, um, but even though it's IP rated, I would often suggest having it in some slightly sheltered area and definitely not in front of the sun because these things can get hot and there is cooling and everything, but you obviously want to put it in a shaded area because you don't want, if it gets hotter and hotter and the fans are working more, then your efficiency is gonna lose and it's not a good thing. Don't put them inside a container without air conditioning. You'll just bake it and you'll damage the IGBT. IGBT stands for Insulated Gate Bipolar Transistor. That's the device that does the switching at the back end. That does all the hard work. With any transistor, you have a slight voltage drop and that can create heat. And these things are tough, they're really tough the devices, but don't let it overwork. Let it in a cooler place where you can, and that's re really useful. Also consider altitude. It generally is not a problem. Um, maybe in some areas it's an issue, but generally don't go mount the inverters at the top of the mountain because you may have problems. It'll probably work fine, but when you're getting into the high power or the high at the, the, the upper end of the inverter may start getting you issues look about don't put it by flammable materials or petrol or gas it's electrical just keep it safe so a simple thing about mounting the unit um you mount the inverter you put the plugs in i'm not going to teach you how to mount an inverter i'm sure you know how to do it it's quite heavy um the bigger ones 35 kg um smaller ones obviously lighter um, I would often suggest a two-man lift, you can do it yourself, but it is, it's much easier to do a two-man lift. I'm not going to explain how to actually mount an inverter. Going a bit further, look at the battery connection. So I'm going to stop this video as the wiring, so we'll start talking about the wiring in the next video.